Isaiah 54. You know that verse we've been looking at for a few weeks now. Yes, Amen. I still like that verse. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Verse 2, Isaiah 54. Let's read. We always read together, don't we? Let's start from verse 1. We'll read together. 1 to go. Let's start from verse 1, big man. 1 to go. Sing, O barren, thou that is not bare, break forth into singing and cry aloud. Now, go for it, people of God. Louder. Verse 2. Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them search what is not the top of thy stations. Fear not, lengthen thy thoughts, and strengthen thy sins. Verse 3. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles, and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Go back to verse 2, please. So we have discussed, enlarge the place of thy things, isn't it? Your mind needs to be renewed, isn't it? Expand your mind. If you can carry it in your mind, you will carry it in your hands. Did you hear that? If you can carry it in your mind, you can carry it in your hands. What your mind can conceive your life, are you following me? Can bring forth. What your mind can conceive your life can bring forth. Amen. The, your mind is the womb of your life. Are you hearing me? Your mind is what? The womb of your life. It is in your mind you conceive the things you bring forth. Amen. Amen. All right. So enlarge the place of that. We said stretch forth thy curtains. God will stretch us. Amen. Amen. Yes. It might be difficult. It might be painful. You may not be singing as much as you're singing, but God will do it so he can do great things in your life. Amen. Amen. And then today we are looking at spare not. Amen. Did you see that? Yes, sir. One, two, but what does it say? Spare not. What comes to mind when it says spare not? Mercy. Don't withhold. Mercy. Mercy. Yeah. Anybody else? We're going to consider all of that. Amen. And so when he was talking about stretching the place of your, your habitation, he says, don't spare anything. <laughs> Praise God. Go for it. Are you here with me? Go for it. Spare not. By the message of God, you do it, isn't it? But go for it. Tap your neighbor for me. Say, go for it. Go for it. Do it like you're doing it very seriously. Somebody tap herself. That's, I like that. Say, go for it. Now, I want everybody to be with me. We, are, we have 30 minutes, amen? amen? And it's going to be a packed 30 minutes. Follow me, follow me. Go for it. Spare not. Do you understand what that means? It means if you are trying to build a tent and your mind has not been enlarged and you are thinking about building one small spot for yourself. Remember the woman who said, I only have this little thing in my house. And I'm going to just cook it. And after that, me and my son will eat. And after that, what happens to us? We will die. She has already planned her life into death. Are you following me? Yes. And the man said, go and bake it. Bring for me first. After you brought for me, then make for yourself. The man brought a spare not dimension into her life. Are you with me? Because he was saying, look, there's a dimension I'm bringing you to in your life that you cannot hold back anymore. Praise God. You cannot be on the spot anymore. You have to go for it. Put your all into it. Put your heart into it. Put your soul into it. Amen. Amen. Go for it. Amen. Amen. Who told you you are not able to achieve? Amen. Who told you are not able to make it? Say, but you have to do what? Go for it. Spare not. Spare not. If it means borrow more length to strengthen your tent, do it. Spare not. Amen. Amen. And that's what we're going to consider today. And I pray that the Lord will give us revelation and he will give us understanding Amen. in the spirit, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let me use an Old Testament story to lay the foundation for this. 2 Kings chapter number 13. 2 Kings chapter number 13. Let's go quickly to verse 14. Second Kings 13, 14. If you're there, say I'm there. Amen. Now Elisha has be, be, was falling sick of his sickness whereof he died. And Joash, the king of Israel, came down unto him and wept over his face and said, Oh, my father, my father, 
the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. Do you recognize this statement? Yes, sir. This was the same statement that Elisha made when Elijah was going. Now, Elisha is going and King George is tapping into the same anointing. He does so day a day. <laughs> People of God, before I go on, there are patterns in the spirit. There are patterns in the spirit. If you recognize a pattern in the spirit, key into it. Are you following me? Yes, sir. There are things that kingdom process has already identified for you. Has already laid it out for you. Are you following me? You don't need to sweat to enter into it. All you need to do is to follow the pattern that has been laid out. And if you can see that pattern in scriptures, as you study your Bible and you pray, and you recognize that pattern, the Holy Spirit opens your heart to it. What you should do is simply key into that pattern. Are you still with me? Yes. And then he will produce the result associated with it. Elisha said it when Elijah was going. Now Joash is saying it when Elisha is about to go. Because Joash recognizes that this is the season to connect to what this man carries. Gehazi could not do it. Because Gehazi was always thinking about the flesh. This is another topic entirely. Holy Spirit, help me. That is why sometimes the problem is not the fact that fathers did not lay the right foundation. It's the fact that those who are following behind are not following the foundation of the fathers. Fathers have responsibility to show the way. Are you following me? But people have responsibility to follow the way the fathers have shown. If not, nothing will happen. Amen. That's why in this generation and in this time, our prayer is not that our spiritual fathers always take us to the water to drink. We also want to learn how they got to the water themselves. Are you following me? So that we can get to that water ourselves. Because this water never dries. Praise God. Amen. amen. Come on, this prayer. Are you still with me? Yes, sir. That's a good place to shout amen. amen. Glory to God. So there are patterns in the spirit and it is possible for you to key into them. It's possible for you to key into them. If somebody gives a testimony and said, I did this and God opened this door, I stood on the word, that's a pattern. Key into that pattern. Amen. My brother was giving a testimony. It was a pattern. You key into it and you see it come to pass in your life. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, let me, before I go, let me say this. We've, we've established in this house that professional doors are open, isn't it? Yes, professional jobs are coming. I don't know if you understand. Yes. They're already here. Are you following me? Somebody testified last week that God opened that door for them. Now, it means it's working, it's available, and it's here. Now, it is your responsibility to key into it. Praise God, amen. amen. All right, okay. Let's go. Verse 2, my, uh, sorry, verse 15, my dear. So I'll just say big man, you're not big man, amen. <laughs> verse 15. And Elisha said unto him, take bow and arrows. And he took unto him bow and what? Arrows. Next verse. And he said to the king of Israel, Put thine hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it. And Elisha put his hands upon the king's hands. And he said, Open the window eastward. And he opened it. Eastward, the sun rises from the east, isn't it? So eastward is the rising of the sun. The rising of the sun is the place of revelation. Are you following me? All right. He opened it eastward. Then Elisha said, shoot. <laughs> yeah, no, sir. And what did he do? And he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For thou shalt smite the Syrians in Aphek till thou hast consumed them. Next verse, please. And he said, take thee arrows. And he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, smite the ground. And he smote how many times? thrice and then did what stay he stopped next verse and the man of god was wroth with him what was he doing he was angry was upset with him Is somebody following this story so far yeah he said thou should have smitten how many times but man of god you did not tell me how many times are you following you said smite you didn't tell me how many times now you why are you upset with me follow this story follow this story he said thou should have smitten how many times five or six times then hast thou smitten Syria till thou hast consumed them. Whereas now thou shalt smite Syria but thrice. Father, give us understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Today we are saying, spare not. Are you following me? Everything that you need to go for, go for it. Did you hear me? Yes, sir. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. He says, whatever your hand findeth to do, do it well. Do it diligently. Do it with all your might. Do it with all your strength. Spare not. Some of you have come into this country and you are saying to yourself, God will do great things in my life. And God says, I should tell you, it is not just God that will do great things in your life. God wants you to do great things <laughs> for his kingdom. Amen. Amen. And for yourself. So he's saying to you, spare not. This is not time for you to hold back. It's not time for you to be in the corner. It's not time for timidity to cover your eyes. Is somebody listening to me? It's not time for you to go to school and then stay at the back and don't let anyone see you because you feel that you cannot perform and you cannot do what God wants you to do. It's not time for you to look at yourself and tell yourself, I'm not capable of getting to where God wants me to get to. Spare not. Amen. Amen. This is a season where you go all out for it. Go all out. No hindrance. Nothing holding you back. Nothing stopping you. Are you all with me? Yes, Spare not. Now, watch this. Thank you, my son. Watch this now. Watch this. The Bible says in this story, and this is the story we're going to use to establish it. It was time for Elisha to go, isn't it? And Elisha was about to go, and Elisha said, look, let me call the king. Call the king. King, come. Bring your bow and your arrows. Now, the bow and arrow is a weapon that the king is familiar with. Are you following me? Kings are always in battle. The bow and the arrow signifies their victory. So what God is saying, what Elisha is trying to say is, look, bring your instruments of warfare. The thing that you use to make life beautiful for you. That thing you have in your hands as a king to rule and to reign. Bring it. You getting this? Bring it. And for you, I'm talking about your gifting. For you, I'm talking about your calling. I'm talking about your anointing. I'm talking about your talents. I'm talking about the burdens that you have in your heart of what you can be and what you can do. Are you still here with me, Day Spring? Yes. I'm talking about your dreams. Praise God, amen. amen. Your purpose. Everything you carry inside of you. That's what I'm talking about today. Elisha told the king, <laughs> it's your paparazzi camera. It's okay. Take the last one. Sit down, please. Let me concentrate on my preaching. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Well done, son. <laughs> Are you all are you with me? He said, bring that thing that you carry with you. That thing that makes you who you are. Yeah. Is somebody listening to me? Yes. Many of you have dreams that you have not touched for years. You've packed it and kept it down. Thinking to yourself, I'm not capable, I'm not able. <laughs> the king said to Joash, bring your bow, bring your arrows. Amen. Amen. Because the dimension I'm about to bring you into is, I am going to name that thing the name of the Lord. I'm going to bring some dimension. I'm going to breathe into that thing. Something that has never existed in that thing before. Are you listening to me? Bring it. And he brought it. So, this spring, everybody here listening to the sound of my voice. Every dream you carry. Every hope you have. Are you listening to me? Bring it out. What did I say? Come on, what did I say? Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. It's very practical today. Bring it out. Stop hiding Stop hiding it. Stop telling yourself you're not able to. You see that business idea you wrote? And you kept it. You cover, covered the book and you kept it. And you said, I don't know if that will ever happen. God says, I should tell you to bring it out. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Yes, that ministry, that gift you carry inside of you. You used it once or you never used it before. And you're wondering if you will ever use it. God says, bring it out. Are you following me? Spare not. I want to touch every area of your life. I want to impact every dimension of your life. Spare not. Amen. Amen. He brought it. And then he said, look, open the window eastwards. Now, east, like I said, rising of the sun. The wise men came from where? The east. They came after seeing a star. So revelation is what we are talking about here. He says, open the window to the east. The window means your mind, your heart. Open it towards revelation. Position yourself towards revelation. Come on, amen. amen. Position yourself towards God speaking to you about what he wants to do in your life. 
Position your, yourself in the place where you can hear God opening you up to where he's sending you. Hallelujah. See, naturally, the sun rises where? From the east. So, the brightness of life begins from the east. So, brightness comes from revelation. Amen. Amen. Open the window of your heart and your mind. Your thinking faculties. Every system in you. Open it to revelation. Open it to new things. Open it to great things. <laughs> Amen. Amen. See, we continue in mediocrity as long as we expose ourselves to mediocrity. Did you hear me? But we step into excellence the more we expose ourselves to excellence. Amen. <laughs> the more you open yourself to excellence and you start to read things about excellence, you start to connect with people and mindsets that are excellent, the more it starts to tap into you, isn't it? Yes, That's why your friends are not, should not be, if you're an ego, how many egos have you seen staying and spending time with chickens? Have you ever seen that before? I grew up with my grandmother, praise God. She had lots of chickens, amen. And she would whistle and they would all fly, come down to eat, amen. And we give them corn and everything. Not one day did I see an eagle join them. Because eagles do not associate with chickens. The association is different. You cannot have an eagle calling on your life and associate with people who have low standard. Amen. Amen. No, but pastor, are you not saying we should discriminate? No, I'm not saying you should discriminate. I'm saying you should engage with people who will help where you're going. Help your anointing, help your calling. Help what you carry inside of you. If every time you are with people, those people are always telling you, calm down, it's okay, it's okay, remain where you are. Even thank God that you're here, sir. Pray for God to open up your life to people who will say to you, you can come up higher, you can go up further, you can step up deeper. Are you following me? Yes, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Huh. So, he says, bring that thing with you, bring that gift, in. bring that thing, open it up. Bring it to me. Now, Joash brought the arrow, brought the bow to the, to, to the prophet. The prophet said, open the window. Open himself to excellence. Open yourself to greatness. Open yourself to the future. It doesn't matter how young or how old you are. Open yourself. There's a new dimension coming. Are you following me? He says, now take the arrow. Take your gifting. Take your calling. It's time to shoot. Praise God. It's time to do what? Shoot. It's time to release it. Now, this kind of release was different. Every day before now, Joash shot his arrow by himself. Are you following me? On this day, Joash did not shoot his arrow by himself. He held the arrow and Elisha, glory to God, put his hand on Joash's hand. And then together showed him to shoot an arrow. So the prophetic covering, <laughs> amen. amen, the anointing for greatness, the anointing to move. That's why fathers... It's important for you to learn how to train your children. Don't just tell them shoot. Put your hand on their hand. Are you following? Yes. Show them how to do it. That's what Elisha was doing with Josh. That's why he called him. He said, my father, my father. Amen. Amen. So he, he said, look, I want the fatherly anointed. Walk with me as a son. So he put his hand on him put his hand on the arrow and shot it and then named the arrow the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. Day spring, I want to say this to you very boldly with all my heart and I want you to receive it with all your heart. You are entering into the season where you are shooting arrows of deliverance for your life Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. That application will go like an arrow. Amen. Oh, someone hearing me today. That, there should be a louder amen. It's a good place to shout amen. amen. That thing will go like an arrow. Amen. It becomes the arrow of your deliverance in your home and your family. Amen. Fathers in the house. It's Father's Day today. Amen? Amen. You should learn to start shooting arrows for your children. Children yet unborn. Children born. You sit down based on revelation that you've received. And start praying for that child. Don't pray based on what you see naturally. Pray based on what you see spiritually. That's a different way of prayer. If you pray based on what you see naturally, you will pray against problems and difficulties. But if you pray based on what you see spiritually, you pray from solution, you pray from breakthrough. Amen. Amen. It's 
not, Father, don't let this child fail because he's not reading. No, 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 no. It's, Lord, I see success and prosperity ahead of this child. Therefore, I prophesy to be so in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And every obstacle against that prosperity, I remove you from his life. Now, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Listen to me. There are things that only you can say for your children. Yes. Do you hear me? Yes. There are things that only you can prophesy on your children. Because they come from your loins. The Bible says, Melchizedek prayed for Abraham. And the Bible says, his sons that were in his own loins, they were not born yet. They received that prayer that Melchizedek prayed. Oh, glory to God. Yeah. He said, Abraham gave tithe to Melchizedek. And he said, as Abraham gave tithe, his children that were unborn were given tithe. As their father was doing it, but those Sakayaga. That's why as fathers, be careful what you do. Because there are some things you're doing, your sons are already engaged. Your sons are already engaged. There are some beds you should not find yourself lying down on. Are you listening to me? Because you are sowing a wrong seat for your children. There are some tables you should not sit down to have conversations. Because your son will find himself in that same table if he's not careful. Are you here with me? He's Sadoya. Amen. Amen. He shot the arrow. He says, it's the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. Then he said, take these arrows. This is where we're going. Amen. He says, strike the ground. Now, he did not tell him how many times to strike it. So, the guy struck it how many times? Three times. Now, three seems okay, isn't it? But the man of God was upset with the king. He said, you shall strike the ground five times or six times. But you did not tell me how many times to do it. Why are you upset that I did it only three times? So there's something happening here. There's something Joah should know that apparently he doesn't know. Thank you. Joash, read the room. Are you with me? Read the room. Hallelujah. You are in a prophetic season. Read the room. <laughs> there are dimensions happening. Arrows are being shot. Read the room. Are you following this? What does this mean? It means as a king, Joash should already be perceiving in his spirit. This is not a child's play. Are you listening to me? There is something happening at this season of my life. There's a turnaround going on here. Amen. Amen. If the man says I should strike the ground, I should actually strike until he says stop. Amen. Are you getting this? This is what God wants you to do. If he says pray, pray until he says stop. Amen. If he says give, give until he says stop. If he says go for it, keep going until he says stop. Mm. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Whatever he tells you to do, Mary said to the, the, the guys in charge of the wedding, do it. And he said to them, fill the pots. See, Every instruction, obey to the fullest. Everything inside of you, use it to the fullest. Every glory. Are you, are you hearing me, people of God? Keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going until he says stop. Read the room. Look around in your life. God is not playing. God is not playing. Are you listening to me? God is not playing. The fact that he's staring you up to something, there's a season in your life. Joash, you are a king. Sit in your position as a king. Read the room. Perceive in your heart what's going on and apply yourself accordingly. Praise God. Amen. Oh, glory to God. If God opened you to two, it means God is showing you that there is more where two came from. Amen. If God used you to open blind eyes, God is trying to tell you that there's more where that came from. Hallelujah. Joash, what you should be doing is striking consistently until the prophet says stop. Fathers, what we should be doing is to be there for our children all the time. No room for us to say, I am feeling like that or like this. Let the sacrifice of your life continue. Amen. 
Is somebody still with me? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Spare not. Whatsoever your hand finds to do, do it well. Do it well. No half-hearted, haphazard behavior. Do it well. Are you there with me? If it's to take care of the children, take care of them well. With all your ability. If your job is to arrange things, arrange, are you, is somebody getting this? Arrange well to the best of your ability. Spare not. Hallelujah. Amen. Spare not. This is where the devil gets us. We get tired of doing well. And we start to ease off. At least I've done my best. At least I've tried. Let somebody else pick up. Sometimes we're doing good to people and we stop. They didn't do good to me. After I faith, oh hallelujah. I spent all my time doing good for them. Is somebody still with me? Yes, sir. I did not get anything back. So I'm going to stop. No, no, no. He says you should have smitten how many times? Five or six times. Keep going until you hear God say you should stop. Who told you to give hope? Leave, lose hope concerning that dimension. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Sometimes this happens to us. It can happen to a brother or happen to a sister. The fact that sister A has a relationship with brother B. Are you following me? Exactly. Now brother B decides to treat her badly. Are you following me? And do her all sorts of things that is not meant to be done. Now that sister leaves that relationship with a scar. Now the next brother she meets, she treats that brother the way... Are you following me? She cannot love to the fullest. Eh? She cannot give herself to that relationship the way God wants her to anymore. Because somebody has hurt you somewhere. And there are many people who go from one relationship to another. And from one relationship to another. And the scars they carry with them from one to another hinders the fullness of the next relationship. What God wants to be beautiful cannot be beautiful because you are holding to pain that was put in you many years ago. And God says, I want you to let go completely. Is somebody stay with me? Yes. So people are married and they don't love completely their husband or their wife. Amen. Amen. Give it your all. That's what God is saying to you today. Is somebody hearing me? Whatever that job is, give it your all. That job may be temporary. Still give it your all. You may not like the pay. Still give it your all. Amen. You may not like the supervisor. But give it your all. That's what the Bible is saying to us. It says, spare not. Strike it five times or six times. Jesus said, if they ask you, go one mile. Offer to go with them two miles. Hallelujah. Yes, Amen. Every time they say to look, can you do this for, for us? I take it and I give it my all. Don't do things based on how people feel or what people think. Sometimes we say, even that man, if they ask him to do it, can he do it as, as <laughs> so I'm not going to do it with my all. Forget that. Forget that. Amen. Amen. Somebody say here with me. Yes, sir. Give it your what? Your all. Spare not. See, why? Because if you're going to break forth, you're only going to break forth when you have that attitude of giving it your all. Yes, sir. That's, that's the only way you're going to break forth into new things. The most basic things, sometimes we overlook and we don't give it our all. If they say your, your job is to arrange the chair, arrange the chair with the best of your ability. Amen. Amen. Make sure it is and the angles are straight. Amen. Amen. Everything is properly set. Everything is arranged. Do it and be happy doing it. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Promotion comes to the diligent, not to those always complaining. Yes, sir. Did you hear me? Yes. Sir. yes. yes sir. Seest a man that is what? Diligent. Yes. What happens to him? Where are not harm with people, okay. not men, men. It's diligent people. Diligent people enter 
the council of kings. Amen. Men, men are served by people who don't have diligence in their life. So when he says, spare not, he's saying, keep hitting, keep hitting, keep hitting until it breaks. Amen. Amen. Until it breaks. He says, you should have done it six times. So you consume them completely. You've done it three times. You will only destroy them three times. But you shall continue. So who stops you? Only God can tell you when to start. And only God can tell you when to stop. Yes. Don't stop because of how you feel. Don't stop because, are you getting this revelation today? I, I hope it's landing properly. Don't stop because of how you feel. Don't stop because people are not applauding you. Don't stop because nobody acknowledged you. Are you getting it? Don't stop because people are not celebrating you. It doesn't matter how many people celebrate you. If heaven does not celebrate you, that's, that celebration is nothing. Praise God, amen. <laughs> Praise God. Keep hitting, keep smiting it, keep hitting it until he says it's time for you to stop. But Father, I did it. Pastor did not recognize me. He said, keep doing it. Amen. Amen. Lord, you said I should, I should take this thing to that person. I took it. They didn't even say thank you. Sure. You understand? Mm -hmm. They didn't even appreciate me. God says, keep doing it. Amen. <laughs> Don't stop. Hallelujah. Amen. Nevertheless, at thy will, we'll cast the net, isn't it? Yes, sir. We'll cast the net. At thy will. This ring, Jesus says, as you say to us today, spare not. Amen. Amen. Spare not, spare not. Amen. Spare not. You can do the masters. <laughs> Are you here? Yes, sir. I say you can do the masters. Yes, sir. You can do the PhD. Yes, sir. I say you can do it. Yes, Are you following me? Yes, There's no... There... Hey, can do see that. Mm. There's no rationing of money in heaven. I don't know if you understand. Yes, God is not saying, I have given money enough to my children. There's no more money for me to make available to the next group. No. Praise God. And when God gives, it's not a loan. Good measure. Press down. Praise God. Amen. You can do the PhD. Your brain can carry it. Somebody saying, I don't know if school is for me. God is saying school is for you and you will do exceedingly well there in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Ayo was telling us of how a teacher said to him at age 12, I don't think this school is for you. He came and he told us, Amen. Now, I spoke to her in the spirit, Amen. And I think she heard me. Number one, I said, do not trouble my son anymore. I didn't say this guy because there are some battles when you start fighting in physically, you miss the point. Yes. You've missed the whole point. You've missed the whole point. And the devil has reduced you to his level. See, bantering words with people who don't understand things, you're a mysterious person. You come from above. And you are meant for above only. So it's not to sit down here and say, why did you say this to myself? You should have said this. Why did you not say that? What did you say? And you start arguing. And we start arguing. And they start calling you this. They start labeling you. No, 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 no. What is her name? Amen. Full names, please. <laughs> Give me the name. I open my window to the east. <laughs> Amen. Pra Hallelujah. Lord, give me a revelation concerning this. Yes. And God gives me a word. Asakaya. Amen. And then I begin to speak the word in the name of Jesus. If you see my son, everything that will come out from your mouth will be positive. If you want to say negative, you will swallow it in Jesus' name. Amen. And I keep speaking it. He's here. No permission to talk to him anyhow again. Are you listening to me? Yes. yes. It's not a matter of parents' day. I start shouting in parents. No, 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 no. We serve the weapons of our warfare, not Canaan. But they are mighty through God to pull him down from hold. As I pray on her, I pray on my son. Ask him. Before he goes every Sunday, kneel down. We take the oil. Amen. In front of the door. You've been to my house, most of you. Just in front of the door. He kneels down there. We lay hands. Give it some good 10 minutes of praying in tongues. <laughs> Amen. As the Spirit leads. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He will stand up. There's oil on his head now. His head is shining. <laughs> Praise God. 
and the boy is looking for ways to clean the oil <laughs> from his face. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But my boy is going anointed. Amen. Amen. You can't talk to him anyhow. No. If you say failure, it bounces back at two sides. It bounces back from his head. It was making his head as hard as flint. Did you not hear it? He said he wrote to the head teacher. I should not be doing this. Copied it on, copied us on it. Amen. I said, my son, my son, this is it. I have transferred a little anointing on this boy. Amen. Amen. Right to him. And as he wrote it, his mom and I, we had hands. And we were praying and we said the response is favorable in Jesus' name. Amen. Boldness. Is somebody getting this? Yes, sir. Keep hitting. Keep hitting. Six times, seven times. Keep going until the father himself says stop. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Spare not. Spare not. Spare not. I know God has given you a miracle and be miracle, but spare not. Praise God. Amen. The room is full, but spare not. There's more. Hallelujah. Amen. God can do how? Exceedingly? You can ask or, or what? So, so it is your thinking and imagination. God can even do greater than that. So it's not only what you ask, Daddy, that God blesses. God blesses what you think. I said it to you in this church before, isn't it? Hallelujah. Amen. So it means that Josh was not getting a double portion of Elisha's spirit. It was possible to get six times of what Elisha was carrying. Praise God. Hallelujah. But Josh, your dimension is a king, not a prophet. Amen. So it doesn't matter what you want to do. It is possible for the anointed to be on your head to do it. You don't have to be a pastor to walk in power. You could be an accountant. Sorry, bro. I know you don't like accounting. <laughs> but you can be an accountant and walk in what? Power. You can be a doctor and walk in what? Power. You can be in the health industry and walk in power. You can be a pharmacist and walk in power. You can be a business person and walk in power. Are you following me? Your business can start with one pot on one cooker. And because of the power dimension, six times more, you are opening something that you did not believe you could open in a year later. Are you listening to me? Yes, you can walk in power. Is somebody getting this today? Yes, Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. But the secret is this. Spare not. Are you there with me? Keep going. Keep pushing. Don't leave any stone unturned. Amen. Amen. That's why as men... And even women, we must be learning to wear different hats every day. Amen? Be, wear the heart of a philosopher in the house. Amen? Spend some time thinking. Think. Put your mind to work. Amen? Plan. One year time, two years time. Amen? Today I'm receiving orders by text. In a year's time, I want to receive order through just eat. Somebody's not getting this. Hey, Nobody's not getting this. Are you here? Are you listening to me? Yes. Amen. I want to receive. You know, today this business looks like this. In a year's time. See, if you don't put a vision to it, it will never move. You hear me? If you just if you just keep doing it like you just want to do it in the backside, it will not move. But if you start putting vision and structure to it, then it will move. Because it's the vision you attach to it that gives it leg and motion. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Now watch this. Enlarge the place of thy tent. Stretch forth thy curtains. Do what? Spare not. Spare not. Don't hold back. Are you listening to me? Don't hold back. Put your heart to it. Like the Americans say, put your back to it as well. Praise God. Amen. Put your energy into it. Put your heart into it. Keep pushing. Keep moving. Amen. Amen. 
Someone said, if you cannot fly, what should you do? Run. If you cannot run, what should you do? Walk. If you cannot walk, crawl. But by all means, do what? Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Day spring, keep moving. Are you with me? <laughs> Put your back to it, keep moving. Put your heart to it, keep moving. Don't let anything stop you. Spare not. Spare not. Spare not. Spare not. I was reading the other day in London. They found a family of four in the house. They don't know what happened to them. The man was just going to turn 40. Four of them. Husband, wife, two children. Passed away. They don't know what happened to them. They're investigating in London. And I sat down and I could not help it. My heart became so heavy. They were not sick. That's what everybody was saying. They were fine. Look at little children. No life anymore. But you, you have life. Are you with me? You have life. You can move. You can talk. You can act. You can walk. Don't be stagnant. Are you listening to me? Yes. Keep moving. Keep pushing. Keep knocking. The Bible says we should knock and the door shall be. Come on, this ring. The door will what? Seek and what will happen? Ask and what, what happens? Keep, keep doing it. Another translation says keep asking, keep knocking, keep seeking. Smites five times, six times, seven times. How many of you know that it's not the first blow that you hit at a wall that breaks the wall? Sometimes you need to hit consistently at the same point for a while. Then he breaks it. Fathers don't give up on children. Children don't give up on fathers. Are you listening to me? And then every one of us do not give up on what God has asked you to do. Keep hitting. Keep hitting. Keep hitting. Amen. Amen. Eventually, it will break amen. and you will receive what God has ordained for you. Amen. If you believe it, shout aloud, amen. amen. Lift up your right hand with me and pray for yourself. As we bring today's service to a close, pray for yourself. Commit everything in your life into God's hands. And say, Lord, help me to keep hitting. Help me to spare not. Help me to keep going. Help me to keep striking. Help me to read what is going on. To be sensitive in the spirit. To perceive what's happening around me. What's happening in my personal life, in my prayer life, in every dimension of my life. Help me to perceive what you're saying, what you're doing. Help me to open my heart to the east to receive the instructions of heaven, to receive the dimensions of God. Pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for your job. Pray for your family. Pray for your work. And say, Lord, I will keep going. I will keep being persistent. I will keep hitting on it until I see it all come to pass. Thank you, Father.